Morning, everybody. Thanks for joining me. We're going to take a look at our snowstorm, which is coming tonight uh, into tomorrow. This is your Saturday morning update. Last snowfall forecast, things have bumped up a little bit. If you've been paying attention uh, to models, if you're uh, a little bit interested in weather, but you want my take on it, you've definitely seen the models have trended towards us. Um, we're getting close to taking the track. I talked a couple days ago about um, the closest kind of possible track. Um, models kind of trended towards that. Usually you kind of split the difference. If we'd split the difference, we were talking about kind of a moderate snowstorm. Um, we're kind of on the moderate to heavy side of the snowstorm here now. Um, definitely not. A, this is one you're going to remember 20 years from now as a huge, huge dumping, but a big storm nonetheless, certainly by this winter's standards, um, we're going to end up with a good amount of snow out of the system, it looks like, basically everywhere, even um, uh, Rutland and Windsor counties, which were definitely much more uh, up, uh, debatable, up in the air, uh, if you might say, uh, before. Okay, here's what's going on. Um, we kind of have our system kind of blowing out a little bit here. Um, it got really well developed. Here's kind of the original kind of upper level low. Um, and we're just starting to get a kind of a redevelopment of the system. We're going to look on radar. You can start to see a little bit of a swirl here in the atmosphere. And you can see we've got, um, as the clouds kind of develop in this section, we can see that's where the storm, where you have rapidly rising air, that's where the storm is developing now. Um, and that's going to be kind of a slow process. This isn't going to be a storm that explodes onto the scene in a redevelopment phase. It's already kind of mature. There's already a lot of moisture associated with it. And we're going to basically, what that means is we're going to get a punch of snow early here, um, kind of overnight tonight. Um, it could start relatively, uh, it could be enough so that if you're going out this evening, you want to be careful on the way home, certainly. I think First flakes could happen by like five, six o'clock this afternoon in some places. Um, accumulating snow probably holds off for a couple hours after that. But um, once we kind of get into that accumulating snow, we could get two, three, four inches of snow pretty quickly. Then we could kind of let up for a bit um, until the system kind of starts to redevelop. And as it redevelops, some of the um, connection to this upper level low behind it, the mid and upper level low, um, will allow for some banding to occur and it looks like we'll definitely get into some bands how long we stand or them will determine exactly how much snow we get but i think we're looking at a pretty good dumping during that time so we're going to look at three different portions of radar uh, before we get into talking about snow totals and things like that first of all here is the wide view of radar and you can see big swath of moisture coming um a lot of this this is a little overdone i always say this with my radar it's a little overdone but um uh, lots of support right and it's sort of this uh this access back here that's going to keep our snow going tomorrow as um, some of this snow to the west is going to get some more to, as the storm starts to pull away, kind of help us keep the snow lingering through at least tomorrow morning, maybe even to the early afternoon tomorrow. But you can see as we look in close, you're going to see there's some heavy banding headed in our direction that could kick us off with some pretty good snow to get things started. Um, first, I want to take a look at where the storm is developing. You can see a little bit of rotation here. It's a little subtle, but you can kind of see it here. That's where our low is developing. And really, it won't really get going until it kind of gets to the coast. And we're still... Um, this is kind of what's left over, and we're going to really kind of redevelop here off the coast. I um, mean, this happens as storms come across the Appalachians, it kind of disrupts the circulation a little bit. Plus, this storm had been well-developed, and sometimes this happens with storms as they're well-developed. Sometimes they, uh, you kind of jump a little bit ahead, uh, and the, the new place for the storm for low pressure to develop becomes along the front. And so that's a, essentially what's going to happen here. Um, but you can still see plenty of dynamic weather going on with our system to the south and west. And then if we head a little bit further north, you can see um, we've got a little bit of this stuff here. Most of this is not hitting the ground. Certainly none of this is hitting the ground. Um, but even a lot of this is not hitting the ground, and what is is very light. But then, not that long after that, um, probably, like I said, 7, 8 o'clock tonight, we start to get into this band here. Um, which may not hold together entirely the way that it is now, but that starts to, there's a chance that we're going to kind of get a wave of pretty good snow. Um, and that will go for a bit before I think we're going to taper off for quite a bit between say like two, uh, probably between two and five, six o'clock in the morning. So if you wake up early, you might say, oh, we're done. We only got like three, four inches, five inches of snow maybe. Um, and it's sort of snowing, but not that much. And then I think we'll get going again, though, and get some accumulating snow during the morning um, as the system starts to pull away. Most of the models dictate that. As a matter of fact, I want to take a look. This is not exactly what's going to happen, but this is one model's interpretation of what's going to happen. Here you see that first wave of the heaviest of the snow. That will be our heaviest period of snow. Kind of lightens up, and then you see, oh, it's starting to re... As the storm starts to get going, we get to this upper level or kind of mid-level support um, before the storm finally takes off. So 
Again, you kind of see the storm heading in our direction. That heaviest snow that we sort of see that shield here is about seven o'clock at night. You can see we're starting to get into it early by uh, about by midnight to or probably ten o'clock till about two in the morning is probably the heaviest period of snow. But then we see during the morning time, this is like mid to late morning, we start to see it ramp, ramp back up again, and that continues for a couple hours. That could drop another two or three inches of snow, kind of on the backside of the system. So um, with that in mind, um, before we get to the snowfall map, I want to whoops, there is the snowfall map. I want to talk to you about how to subscribe. So here is um, how you do that. Um, you can see we got the button down here. You want to just push that button if you haven't subscribed. A bunch of you have over the last couple of days. This is uh, this is the time of year. We're going to have a lot of videos over the next week because we got two more systems coming after this one. Um, you can see after that, if you click up to the top, there's a little bell there. That will make sure that you do get uh, notifications on your phone um, for uh, being subscribed. All right, um, let's get to those, what you're really looking for here, the snowfall map. It's come up significantly. Um, everybody's looking at six to 10 inches with the exception of Northwestern Rutland County, basically Rutland and areas north and west um, uh, where you get a little bit of shadowing on the backside of the greens, four to six there. I think even the shadowing that often happens kind of in the Route 7 quarter, I think you still get at least six inches of snow, like Manchester, six, seven inches of snow. I've got a town by town map coming, but most everybody's six to 10, to eight to 12 um, across the greens. Some of the highest elevations may even do a little bit more than a foot, uh, general 8 to 12. And these are still a little bit conservative, but I think, um, I don't want to go gangbusters on this. Uh, but yeah, generally, I think we kind of end up in that range, probably close to 10 for a lot of places, 8 for some of the low, or uh, for some of the 8 for some of the valley locations. Let's take a look at what that looks like kind of on a town by town map here. Best guesses by towns. Place like, only places that might see a little bit less. Place like Benson, places uh, like Rutland may only see five, four, five, six inches of snow in places like that. Um, but even as you head into even further areas further north that originally I didn't think would maybe get much. Killington, I think, is nine. The scariest is probably more like 10, 11. Um, Sharon, eight inches of snow. A little bit of uh, shadowing kind of in Sharon and Heartland. You get a little bit of shadowing there in the, in the, uh, um, in the Connecticut River Valley before you head back up the hills again. Heartland's probably just six there, but six, seven inches of snow. Uh, plus like Dorset, seven, eight inches of snow. And some of the places, obviously elevation dependent. If you normally get more, more snow than the center of town gets, you know, just add that uh, on. Uh, plus like Mount Holly, uh, 13 inches of snow. Mount Holly always does well on snow. Jamaica, depending on where you are. This is, I'm thinking Jamaica Village, nine inches of snow. Cavendish, probably about nine inches of snow. Again, depending on where you are, this is kind of the village I'm thinking. Uh, Arlington, eight inches of snow. Powell down there south of Brattleboro or Bennington, uh, about nine inches of snow. Whitingham, close to a foot, Dover, 11 inches of snow. Uh, and then as you head down uh, the Connecticut River Valley, Rockingham, eight, Guilford, maybe nine. So um, again, pretty good pretty good totals as we go through. If you want to take a look at that in terms of Alpine or Nordic areas around, I think that uh, generally I'm going to kind of let you see this map, but you see most of the uh, Alpine areas looking at at least 10 inches of snow. Um, some of them up to 10, 12, even 14 in a few places. And uh, some of our, so if, if you look for your specific uh, Nordic spot, really depends on where you are, right? So, but most everybody does really pretty well out of them. Um, even Mountaintop Resort, uh, kind of up there in Rutland County, does pretty good with six to nine inches of snow. Um, I think you'll be able to get out and get good Nordic skiing in for a couple of days, which is really good. That's been tough for a lot of the season. Um, a lot of places haven't even really been able to do much except get out there on the trails as they've been wet, but this will really allow things to get going um, a lot better in those regards. Uh, we do have some potential weather later in the week that may kind of impact some of this with a little bit of rain, but that may come with some snow as well. It may not be the best fluffiest snow, but enjoy a couple of days of really good snow for skiing, both downhill and Nordic. Um, I do want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. They help. Oh, well, before I do have some highlights, sorry about that. Uh, before we get the patrons, uh, snow begins six to 9 PM. I think, uh, accumulating snow is more like seven, eight o'clock at the earliest. So if you're only, if you're out kind of later in the evening, but roads could be slippery by any time, I'd say after seven, you need to be at least aware that that's a possibility, particularly, uh, down in, uh, kind of the Bennington area. Uh, if you're up, uh, more in Heartland or, uh, up near, uh, White River Junction, those areas, then you're more towards like 10, 11 o'clock before the snow gets slippery. But anyway, uh, everyone gets at least six inches of snow, basically with a possible exception of North Northwest Rutland County. Roads will be very difficult to travel tomorrow morning. Um, snow will be light and powdery. It's actually not the worst kind of traveling snow. It's actually pretty good for travel. The snow should be um, not a lot of, like, it's not kind of slimy or anything like that. should be good driving snow, but it will still be slick tomorrow morning and a little tough to see, especially if we get in any of those one to two inch an hour snow uh, bands that are possible tomorrow morning. So yeah, that's what's going on. I do want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. If uh, you want to become a patron, there is a link in the description below that talks about the benefits that you get. I um, want to say, uh, give a shout out to my new patrons. I appreciate those of you who've signed up in the last few days. Um, they get an extra forecast on Wednesday. All of them do, excuse me, sorry. Um, there are some that can get 
that get uh, my, all my stuff emailed to them. So if you don't want to have to search my videos, you can do that. Um, there's also a section where you can get um, a 10-day forecast that I do every Wednesday that kind of gives an outlook of what I think is happening weather-wise. And yeah, that's what's going on. Um, thanks again for the support. I will be back on probably, probably going to wait till Monday morning to do uh, a forecast, but then I'll probably have a forecast just about every day next week because there's a big storm coming kind of Tuesday night into Wednesday. Um, and then another potential high impact storm towards the end of the week and next weekend. So probably just about every day next week with a video. Keep an eye on my YouTube channel. All right. Thanks for joining me. I'll be back on Monday with a work. Good look at work.